words cannot describe how sad I am currently, how depressed I am, how totally not happy I am right now. Before I get into that though, I need to make up for the fact that I edited out about a minute of my previous video on XHP. I need to complete my thinking on XHP and then I'll go back to the issue of this uh, specific video. So XHP, it's basically like having sport mode continuously. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. It feels as if the comfort has become sport mode. And uh, to be honest with you, I feel that sport mode isn't that much different to comfort mode anymore. Perhaps the only difference is that you hear the, the, the pops and bangs from the exhaust and you don't hear them in comfort, obviously. So that's more or less how I can summarize it. And I think that's an excellent, excellent change because you want the car to be responsive and sporty and capable uh, without changing any modes. You know, I made, a, I made another video about the 16 modes we have available. I, I think the fact that the car is sportier by default, you know, in comfort mode with the gearbox to D, to drive, to automatic, whatever, I think that's the best way to have the car. So I get in, I don't think about it anymore. I'm, I know the car is gonna make me happy even without me changing anything while I'm driving it. The other point I wanna make is that, you know, the car is, is just more eager to drop gears now. So uh, you're in eighth on the highway and you put your foot down on the accelerator, it goes to fourth, it drops four gears and it never did this before as far as I remember. Dropping four gears, obviously you get that instant increase in engine RPM, you get that in increase in, in torque, you just, you're just ready to go. When you put your foot down, the car just, you know, launches, it just launches off, you know, it just, if it was a, a rolling beast before, now it's a rolling monster now. So XHP has done these two things, and the other thing is about the, the, the shoving forward that it does when you're uh, you know, manually changing gears. It does this uh, second to, to first as well. There you go, it does it. It, it does it, it's rev matching. It does rev matching basically, and it's, uh, you know, it, it, it matches the, the, uh, the, 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 the rotations of the engine to the rotations of the gearbox in order for when the two meet each other to have the least amount of wear. And this is apparently a, a sporty feature but found on the M cars and that makes me very happy to have it even though I, it annoys the crap out of me. So that's all I have to say about XHP. I'm very happy I did it and I'm sorry I cut a minute of the, of the video uh, by accident, but there you go, it happens. I made this video to talk about a bloody drivetrain error that comes up. Let me start from the beginning. I did the stage one tuning and on the highway drive back to Larnaca this error didn't come up. That night I put fuel, 98 octane from Shell V Power and then the next time I drove on the highway I got the four error, I got the error. Drivetrain error, uh, you can continue your journey but you know you're losing some power and it, I didn't quite know how to describe it it felt as if there was a little bit of a pop maybe it wasn't a pop maybe the the engine cut power and there was a sudden you know uh, dropping back of the car you know deceleration uh, but in any case it happened four times on the way back to the tuning company to put XHP so it had nothing to do with XHP obviously as soon as this happened before we would load XHP we wanted to make sure that it was not a gearbox issue right it could be anything so we put in this, the, the, uh, the diagnostic equipment and it was a knock sensor, intermittent knock sensor. The guys scratched their heads and they said it's probably bad fuel. So I installed the XHP and then continued to use the car, you know, very gently until the, the, the running in period, let's call it, with the XHP was done, you know, about 50 miles, 80 kilometers. Immediately after that, uh, after that, I started to drive the car hard because I wanted to see what XHP had done and the fault never came up. The fault doesn't come up no matter how hard you drive the car, no matter how you drive the car in town, it doesn't come up. It only comes up on the highway at about 120 kph, you know, trying to keep that speed constant. So either with cruise control or with your foot, you know, resting on the on the accelerator, just you know, constantly feeding it fuel. 
that's when it happens. It, 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 it'll happen maybe once every 100 kilometers. It'll happen maybe four times every 100 kilometers. I actually booked an appointment with the dealer to take the car in and have it checked, you know, see, see, get their opinion on what the, what the root cause is. It didn't happen on the way to the dealer. The only time I drove on the highway and it didn't make the error was on the way to the dealer for my appointment to get this thing checked out. So I get to the dealer and he says, well, if there's no fault, it means there's no issue. So there's nothing for me to do. You know, I'm busy. I got other cars. I got more important issues than you. Fine. Fair enough. So he said, drive it back home. And if it doesn't happen again, you're fine. And I drove it back home. And, and of course, on the drive back home, it didn't happen again. So it didn't happen on the way to the dealer and it didn't happen on the way back from the dealer when the dealer was expecting me to tell him what the hell happened. So I thought, okay, it went away. It was bad fuel. It, the fuel was burned through the engine and everything is fine. Well, immediately after that, it started happening again. Every time I'm on the highway, the car at some point, either you know after 10 minutes or after two minutes or after 20 minutes, it'll give me this bloody drivetrain error fault now. So I continued using the car, you know, spirited driving or gentle driving, you know, until I used up the tank and I filled it up again from a different petrol station, from a different company, even with the fresh fuel from a different petrol station. So very unlikely to be contaminated fuel. It happened again. So I have no idea what's going on. Is it the stage one tuning? Did the stage one tune? Is it, is it running the engine too lean at, uh, at low RPM, is it is is that what's happening? Is it contaminated fuel, and the and the contaminants are still in my fuel pump, in my fuel filter? Because this car doesn't have easy, as far as I can tell, this car doesn't have easy access to the fuel filter and to the fuel pump. So if those things, if those things need to be cleaned now, if those things need to be replaced, that's a hell of a job. Take out the the fuel tank, take out the fuel pump, and take out the fuel filter and check them and clean them. And that's a lot of money, you know. It's a lot of money to spend if it's not the fuel. So now I'm totally depressed about it. I don't know if my engine is going to explode. I don't know if there's a problem with the engine just, you know, waiting to show its teeth. So far it happened with low RPM. For all I know, it's gonna happen while I'm, you know, pushing the engine to its limits. It, it might blow up my engine. So words cannot describe how sad this has made me. Like all the enthusiasm, all the enthusiasm I had for the car. Uh, you know, the recent mods I've been doing, the wheels, the XHP, the stage one, all of that, all of that has evaporated right now. My baby has a, has a problem right now. And, and I wanna push my baby to the limits. I wanna get as much as I can out of my baby, but my baby might blow up on me. So essentially what I'm gonna do next, and it wasn't possible to do it yesterday because the guy was busy, but I'm going to remove the stage one tune and I'm going to drive the car back in stock, configuration back in stock tune and see if it happens again if it does then obviously it wasn't the stage one tune if it doesn't it means something in the tune itself induced this error whatever it could be looking at all the videos of people customizing their cars and you know loading these stage one and stage two tunes no one has ever reported this issue the knock sensors themselves if it's the knock sensor it's a cheap item it's like 10 quid it's nothing expensive if it's the knock sensor i doubt it's the knock sensor if what i found is the knock sensor i've tried to push the connector you know into the into the sensor you know make sure it's connected properly if it is a fuel issue please let me know if there's a way to clean the tank and clean the filter and clean the fuel pump you know with an additive in the fuel that that somehow dissolves or somehow improves the condition of the fuel i would be very interested to know Mm-hmm.